Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to make your own wire work brooch pin and this is what mine looks like. So you have your actual pin pad down here that opens up just like a regular brooch pin and then connecting into this hook up there so it's going to stay securely and then along the top here I've made these loops just so that we can use this to attach to something. You need to have these loops to be able to attach and also so this doesn't move around and is unsecure and whatever that you're attaching it to. So this is what it's going to look like. So if you want to learn how to make this yourself, then keep watching. So all we're going to need to make this brooch pin is some wire. Now what I have here is some regular round wire and I'm working with a copper wire. As for the gauge, I'm working with a 1mm here, the thickness of the wire. So I would recommend that you go from a 1mm or upwards in the size, because you got to make sure that your wire is strong enough to be the brooch pin and carry whatever you want to attach it to. So you can either use a 1mm, 1.25 or a 1.5. It really depends on the project as well that you want to use it for. And then we'll need to use some basic tools as well. And then I also just would recommend one final thing. So a metal file would be really nice because you, you want to finish off the ends of your wire nicely. Because when you cut your wire it can be a little bit rough. So obviously you want to leave a point on one end there to be the brooch pin. But you want to make sure it's still finished off nicely and not too rough. So a metal file works fine for that. So let's get it together and let's get started. So we'll just need one length of our wire here to make this brooch pin and what I've cut off is about 30 centimeters of our 1mm wire. So this will be sufficient to make kind of an average size brooch pin. But obviously if you want to make it bigger or smaller you can always either lengthen or shorten the wire that you're working with. So you then want to take the length of wire and what you just want to make sure to do before we start making the brooch pin is just straighten out the wire as much as possible. So just run it through your hands for a bit, warming it up as well. Because you just want to make sure you don't have any kinks and bends in it. Because obviously you want the pin pad especially to be straight. So what I'm going to be doing as well, I'm mainly going to be using my six step bell making pliers. It's just easier to know exactly what size loops I'm going to get. You can easily use round nose pliers instead if you want to, if that's what you have. So working towards one end of our wire first, we're basically making the actual pin of it first here. So just work about six to eight centimeters in from that end point. And then you want to just decide what size you want this first kind of loop to be. Because we're basically going to be making a bit of a spiral here. Because that's going to help with the movement of the brooch pin. So we're not also stress the wire itself. So I place my pliers on my wire. And then I start forming my wire around my pliers here. Just going around as you can see in a circle until the wire comes back out the same way as the bottom one there so the shorter tail and then what we have is that little circle on the end basically gone around as you can see on the end we have two wires going around next to each other so we've pretty much gone around one and a half time and then it looks like that so this is the part that's going to be a bit movable without putting too much stress on the wire so this is basically the pin. What we have to do now is make the top part. And for that, what first of all I'm going to be using is just some chain nose pliers here. Because I just want to make sure we still keep a straight line. But what we need to add is some loops across the top. Because if we just had a straight line here and then the fastening down at the other end, when you attach this to something, it will kind of just wobble around. You need to have something on the top to be able to attach with as well so it's going to stay in place securely. So what I'm going to do first is place my chain nose pliers just a couple of millimetres out from where that loop that we made is, that little kind of spring pat. And I'm just going to put a gentle bend to one side, like that, just a bit of an angle, because we then need to get our first loop started off. And then for these I'm going to be using my smallest on my pliers here, for this I use the second smallest. But I want these loops to be usable but not too obvious either. So I'm going to place this on top of that angle that I made. And then we need to wrap the long end here around that all the way. So we're making a circle on top there. And keep going all the way around the top of the piece again. Until we come back out. So our wire is going to go in the direction that it was to begin with. We'll come full circle 
and a bit more. So basically we're making one and a half circles in this case. But then what I also want to make sure to do is that it comes out a little bit at an angle. So not straight up just yet. Because we need to be able to connect the loops as well with somewhere in between. So this ends up still being a straight line going down. What I'm going to do now then is you can either take some chain notes for this. What I personally prefer to do really is keep my pliers inside there. So inside the loop that I've just made and this long tail is going out at an angle. We need this to come back down straight now to go down and make the next loop. I'm going to place my pliers here. So I'm going to then bend this against my pliers. So kind of use my pliers as leverage to be able to get this wire back out straight. The reason that I'm using this is because I can put this inside of my loop and keep the shape. Whereas if I use chain nose pliers, you would have to try and hold the loop and then bend the wire back. You can do that if you want to. I just prefer to do it this way. And then make sure the rest is straight here. And straighten it out as you go. So this is basically our first loop. And then you just want to keep doing this. It's really up to you how many loops you want to make as well. It also maybe depends how large you're making your brooch pin. So I'm going to move on to the next place that I want to add a loop. You can either just add one on each end or add several down along the way. Starting out the same way, put a bend in. So I have a bit of space in between my loops there. And I just like making my loops and my bends go in the same direction. Place my pliers. Take your wire around your pliers all the way and just move your pliers as you go here. So we get full circle and then also an extra bit over a half. And again come out of that angle here. So that when we place our pliers back where we're going to use them as leverage for this to pull it straight down the center again. So we look at it from the top, we can see we now build another one. And they're kind of still going in a straight line by doing it the way that we've done it. So like I said, you can choose however many loops you want to do. I think I'm going to do one last one. And I'll have to try and get the spacing in between the loops as even as possible. If you want to, you can measure that obviously. I'll just do it by eye. Get your angle in, take your pliers and make your next one. Full circle and then a bit over half again. Like that. I'm getting to a decent size as well for the actual whole pin now as well. Put your pliers in and pull this back out straight. And there we go. Always as you go straighten out your wire just to keep it nice and straight as possible throughout. And there we now have three loops. Now what you can always do here is just if you see anything you can always adjust it just now. If you need to adjust any little angles or anything. I recommend doing that now. But otherwise that's the top part then. So if you're happy with that what I'm going to do now is then finish off this end. And we need to do that by making that little hook that the bottom pin is going to hook into be able to be able to fasten. So I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers again and then towards the end where I want my brooch pin to finish I'm going to bend this downwards a 90 degree angle so it looks a little something like that and then what I'm also just going to do is just have it lined like this is from the side so it's bending straight down now I'm just going to force it out to the side a little bit So it comes a bit out to the side instead of just straight down. We can also adjust that a little bit more. So now I want to cut down this long length. As you can see we have plenty left. So you could easily make a larger one if you want to. And what I'm going to have here is maybe about from a centimetre to a centimetre and a half left from that angle down to where I'm going to cut it off. Like that. And then we need to make that little hook part 
Now I'm just going to get this out of the way because I'm then going to take my, again my six day bell making pliers here. I'm going to go from the bottom, start making a loop upwards. So from the front there, from the end, you can see we have that angle going down and then we're making this coming upwards. It's going to be the actual hook. And you just want to keep rolling it up. Now what you can do now, at this point, this is where you can bring in your metal file while you still have some space because if you completely close, you're not going to close the loop but if you roll it all the way up it might get a bit more difficult. So this is where I would just recommend you file down this a little bit, the end. Just because when you cut it off it's always a little bit rough even if you use flush cutters. So just to make sure it's going to be a nice finish. So you can do that and then keep rolling it up. Now like I said what we don't want is a closed loop here but I do want one that comes in a little bit. So if you can see like that, it doesn't just come down and straight up and have a big opening. It does come in back in a little bit, but just not fully. Because obviously you want to make sure that there's an opening for this part to lock into, like that. But I also want to make sure that it's not too open so it's going to easily come back out. So that's where you can just adjust that, test it how you as you go, how you feel it's going to work well something like this and then there you'd slot your pin into that so that's how it's going to work all that's left to do now is cut down this end so it's going to have the right length what I like to do is come in from this angle because when we cut this, this is going to be a brooch pin we need to make sure that we have a bit of an angle on the end of the wire instead of cutting it flat like that so I'm going to go in I like to do it from the top and cut, make sure that I have my cutters set at an angle. And just have it come out just a little bit further than where that hook is. So to, you make sure that it slots in and obviously doesn't fall back out. Like that. And again, you have the perfect shape now, but it's still a little bit rough. So for this end, I will also just go over it with my file just until you kind of run your finger over it and it doesn't feel rough to the touch but you can still use it as a pin so that's really what you want to do and then once you've done that, filed off the ends then you'll actually have your finished bro brooch pin here and it works quite easily slot that in and out that's your pin and then you have these loops along the top however many you want to make to then attach whatever you want to attach it to with so that's what it looks like so a pretty simple way to make a brooch pin here and then also because we have that spring on this end that we made you're not going to stress the wire so much when you're opening and closing it and closing it. So that's how it looks. So a pretty simple and easy one to make if you want to make your own brooch pins. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to make these Celtic knot wire work earrings and they look like this. So quite simple, they have a nice dangle to them and just because of the gemstone that I added there it also gives a bit of colour. We have this nice effect but they're quite simple and easy to make. So if you want to learn how to make these then keep watching. So these are the few things that we'll need to make these earrings. Now here I have my wire and this is a 